Welcome to Electro Online. Our next problem is a very interesting problem. I had never seen anything like this before. Now I've seen lots of problems with lenses, but not where the object and the lens and the image are moving. Hmm. So let's read the problem. It says an object and a concave mirror of focal length f equals 10 centimeters both move along the principal axis of the mirror at constant speeds. The object moves with speed v equals 15 centimeters towards the mirror with respect to a laboratory frame. So it's important to realize that it's not closing to the mirror or approaching the mirror at 15 centimeters per second. It's moving towards the, the mirror and it's moving at 15 centimeters per second with reference to a stationary laboratory frame. The distance between the object and the mirror at a given moment is denoted by u. When u equals 30 centimeters, the speed of the mirror, vm, so the mirror is also moving relative to the stationary reference frame, the laboratory frame. So the speed of the mirror, vm, is such that the image is instantaneously at rest with respect to the laboratory frame and the object forms a real image. What is the magnitude of vm, the velocity of the mirror? So, at first you think, well, how do I do that? How, where do I begin? But then you realize that you know that 1 over the focal length is equal to 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance. I'll let u be the object distance and i be the image distance. And then you can say that i, if you solve this algebraically, and you probably should remember this equation, i is equal to uh, u times f divided by u minus f. All right, so f is the focal length, u is the distance between the object and the mirror. Now we realize that things are not stationary, so that means we need to take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. So we're going to take the ddt of the image distance and set that equal to the derivative of the right side, the ddt of uf divided by u minus f. All right, now f is a constant, but u is not. u changes, u is constantly changing, so that's the variable. That means that we end up with on left side, the idt is equal to, when we take the derivative of a fraction, then we take the denominator, u minus f, times the derivative of the numerator. Now, u is the variable, f is a constant, so the ddt of that would be f times du dt minus the numerator, which is u times f, times the derivative of the denominator. Now, minus f is a constant, but u is the variable, so times du dt. And the whole thing will then be divided by the denominator squared, which is u minus f quantity squared. All right, now that's the equation we need. Now we need to plug in what these are, and this is the tricky part. So what is the change of the image with respect to, to the, um, uh, with respect to time? Well, we know that relative to the laboratory frame, the velocity is zero, but not relative to the mirror, because if the mirror is moving to the left, for example, then of course, we're approaching the image, so the distance between the mirror and the image would be changing if the mirror is moving towards the image, even though the image is stationary relative to the uh, laboratory frame. So this essentially becomes the velocity of the image relative to the stationary reference frame minus the velocity of the mirror. So that would be the change of the image position relative to the mirror by just subtracting one by the other. So this then will be equal to u minus f. Now u is 30 and f is 10, so 30 minus 10 is 20, so this becomes 20. The focal length is 10. Let me draw a line here so we don't get confused. And then du dt. Now here we talk about the closing speed between the object and the mirror. Now the object in the laboratory frame is 30, but then we subtract the velocity of the mirror to get the closing velocity between the object and the mirror. So this would become uh, V, um, let's see here, VO 
minus Vm. So that would be du dt, that's the closing speed of the object relative to the mirror, not the object relative to the laboratory frame. So minus u, which is 30, times f, which is 10, and the u dt again would be vo minus vm. So that's the equation we need to solve. That allows us to get vm. Now, let's come up here and rewrite the equation, but now we realize that this is zero, because relative to the, refer to the laboratory frame, that's zero. So we end up with zero minus vm. Oh, I forgot something. <laughs> I forgot the denominator. Can't forget that. So in the denominator, we have u minus f. u is 30, f is 10, so that's 20 squared. That gives us 400. There we go. Can't forget the denominator. All right, now let's multiply the denominator by what we have up here. So this is times 400 equals, that's 200, times v of the object, which we know what that is. That is 15 minus v of the mirror. So that would be 15 minus v of the mirror. And then minus 300, 30 times 10, times the v of the object minus v of the mirror. And now notice, oop, and v of the object, of course, is 15. So we can plug 15 in there. Now the only variable left is the velocity of the mirror. So now let's multiply this out. So here we get minus 400 vm equals 200 times 15, that would be 3000. 3000 minus 200 vm. And that would be minus 4,500 plus 300 VM. And notice we have to solve here for VM. Let's move all the VMs over to one side. So we have minus 400. Well, let's combine things first. So minus 400 VM is equal to 3,000 minus 4,500. That's minus 1,500. And that would be minus 200 plus 300. That would be plus 100 VM. Subtract that from both sides. Now we have minus 500 Vm is equal to minus 1500. And so therefore velocity of the mirror is equal to minus 1500 divided by minus 500, which is equal to a positive three. So that's the answer. The mirror must be moving at three centimeters per second in order for the image to be momentarily stationary. At the moment, the object distance is 30 centimeters from the mirror. And looking for my red pen, so the answer is 3 centimeters per second. Notice how they said they just want the magnitude. We don't care if it's the left or the right, so they made that part at least a little bit easier. So again, the only way to do that is to first find the equation for the image distance, then take the derivative of both sides with respect to time, and then realizing that for the di dt and the u dt, we need to find the relative velocity between the image and the mirror and the object in the mirror. Otherwise, it won't work and you won't get the right answer. And that is how it's done.